Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, this is my fifth chapter, chapter 5, which I am going to discuss with you. The name of this chapter is Option of Puberty and its Impact on Marriage. So, with the help of this slide, I would like to discuss the concept of Option of Puberty and its impact on marriage in Muslim law. So, First of all, I would like to discuss option of puberty in Arabic word that is known as khyar ul bulug. So, as you see, there are three stages of age under Muslim law. First is saghir, that is known as the first stage when boy or girl is below 7 years and in Islam at this stage marriage is prohibited. Marriage is absolutely prohibited where a boy or girl is below 7 years. That age is known as saghir as we can compare this with adolescent age of adolescent. Second is age of sariri. Sariri is the second stage where child is above 7 and below 15 years. This is known this is known as Sariri. And at this stage, marriage can be contracted by the guardian. You see, you need to understand this is the second stage. At this stage, marriage can be contracted by the guardian. Bulag is the third stage. Bulag is the third stage and where child is above 15 years, it is believed that child where whether he is male or female has become adult in eye of Muslim law, he has or she has got acquired sufficient uh, sexual competence. So, the age of marriage in Islam is 15 years that is known as age of puberty generally. So, I have used this word option of puberty. So, that is why I try to explain these three categories, three stages so that you can get entire information about option of puberty or when at what time at which stage guardian are allowed to contract marriage of their ward or their children. So, that is why I try to explain these three categories with the help of this slide. So, option of puberty is a method to approve or disapprove the marriage by whom by male or female after becoming adult, after attaining the age of 15 years, if Muslim male is willing to disapprove his marriage which was contracted by his father when he was minor, when he was below 15 and above 7 years, his marriage was contracted by his father or grandfather he wants to disapprove that marriage due to several there there might be several reason for that disapproval. After becoming bulag after be, becoming adult Muslim male has decided not to live with that female then he can disapprove his marriage. But you see law is different for female and male with respect to option of puberty where marriage is contracted by Muslim by, by father or by grandfather 
in that case Muslim male cannot exercise option of puberty. Generally, no Muslim male can exercise option of puberty if his marriage was contracted by his father or grandfather when he was minor. So, you see this under Muslim law approval or disapproval of marriage by the Muslims after becoming adult after attaining the age of puberty where marriage is approved or disapproved. So, approval or disapproval of marriage under Islam is considered as option of puberty. Means parties have option either to approve that marriage or disapprove that marriage which was contracted by their guardian at the time when they were minor. So, this practice this procedure this method is known as option of puberty and in Arabic word this is known as khyar ul bulag. So, option of puberty or khyar ul bulag is nothing but approval or disapproval of marriage by Muslim husband or Muslim wife after becoming adult after attaining the age of 15 years. So, you need to understand this thing firstly what is option of puberty, what kind of option Muslim male or female can use after attaining the age of puberty either they can approve or they can disapprove. But Muslim male cannot disapprove his marriage if marriage was contracted by his father or grandfather. Maternal uncle he can disapprove, but if marriage was contracted by his father or grandfather he cannot disapprove that marriage. Generally means generally when I use this word means law is that he cannot disapprove that marriage, but in exceptional cases he can disapprove that marriage if he has succeeded in establishing the fact before the court that marriage was contracted by his father or grandfather under compulsion, under threat, under undue, undue influence due to fraud. So, on the basis of these Muslim husband can disapprove his marriage which was contracted by his father at the time of his minority otherwise in no case he can disapprove that marriage, he will have to continue that marriage which was contracted by his father or grandfather. The reason behind not permitting him to disapprove that marriage is that father or grandfather are treated as best will wisher of their child, their son or grandson. So, no question can be raised against the goodness or badness of their wishes. So, that is why they are considered as best well wisher of their son or grandson. So, that is why son or grandson cannot use, cannot raise any objection against that act which was done by his father or grandfather with respect to his marriage unless contrary is proved, unless it is shown before the court that his marriage was contracted by father due to threat or compulsion. So, one, you, one thing which you need to understand. On the other hand, Muslim female, they are in advan, advantageous position, they have Muslim female, they have more advantages than their husband with respect to option of puberty and the entire law regarding option of puberty was changed by the Britishers after enacting the dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act 1939. After the commencement of that special legislation, the dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act 1939 Muslim female have got more liberty, more freedom in, in comparison to their husband with regard to option of puberty. What is that 
freedom or liberty which they can exercise against their husband. Muslim female whose marriage was contracted by her father or grandfather when she was minor, she was below 15. After becoming adult, after attaining the age of puberty, either she can approve that marriage or she can dis disapprove the marriage and she has been given more liberty even in respect to time. So, after attaining the age of puberty, after becoming adult, after attaining age of 15, she can approve or disapprove her marriage and that time has been extended up to 18 years means after 15 years and before 18, she has ample time, she has a sufficient time to think or to rethink about the consequences of that marriage which was contracted by her father or grandfather during her minority. So, three year periods are sufficient period to give opportunity to that female for what? To think about her future. So, within three years either she can approve or she can disapprove her marriage. If she is not exercising her right within three year after the expiry of 18 years law will not help her. This dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act 1939 will not help her in breaking her matrimonial tie, because this three years time is considered as adequate sufficient time wherein she should have thought that whether she should continue that marriage or not. So, if she has decided to continue that matrimonial relationship, she can approve that marriage either by establishing sexual relationship with her, hus with her husband or by accepting dower from her husband. So, there are three important ways method through which inference can be drawn that she has approved her marriage, she has exercised option of puberty khyar ul bulag either by establishing sexual relationship with her husband or by accepting dower from her husband or by making declaration that she has decided to live with her husband, that husband, that marriage which was contracted by her father or grandfather when she was minor. The important thing is which you need to understand that rule of privity of contract would not be applicable in this case. Rule of privity as I have already you depicted on this screen in this slide, rule of privity of the contract would not be applicable in this act. What is doctrine of privity of contract? According to doctrine of privity of contract, a stranger cannot sue and cannot be sued. In brief, you can, you can understand this a stranger cannot sue and cannot be sued. Means, a person who is not party to the contract has no right to bring a suit or not be sued against a stranger no suit can be initiated. So, a stranger cannot sue or cannot be sued this is the doctrine of privity of contract. So, where dower was fixed by father or grandfather on behalf of his minor son at the time of marriage, after becoming adult, after attaining the age of 15 years, 
that Muslim husband cannot take plea before the court when uh, suit for recovery of maintenance, uh, suit of recovery for unpaid dower is filed by Muslim husband, he cannot take plea before the court that he was not party to the marriage because at the time of marriage he was minor, he was not in position to understand the nature and consequences of his act, what his father was doing. So, he cannot take plea before the court that since he was minor at the time of marriage after becoming adult, now he has become adult, he has attained the age of puberty and court cannot compel him to give dower mehar to his wife, because he was not, he was a stranger to the marriage, he was, he was a stranger to the contract, because he had no idea about the amount of dower, which was fixed by his father or grandfather. So, being a stranger, he should be exempted from this liability, court will not help him, court will pass decree in favor of Muslim female with a condition that Muslim husband will have to pay that amount which was fixed by his father or grandfather at the time of marriage. So, no plea would be allowed by the court and husband is bound to pay the amount of dower to his wife. So, you need to understand this rule of privity or doctrine of privity of contract would not be applicable in this case, option of puberty. So, I think that uh, you all have understood this. So, option of puberty as I said, this thing can be exercised by Muslim husband or by Muslim wife. So, after making thorough analysis, you can see that Muslim wife has more liberty in comparison to uh, her husband and I, as I said puberty, age of puberty is a bona fide ground mentioned in the dissolution of Muslim marriage act 1939. Section 2 subsection 7 talks about age of puberty. On that basis Muslim female can get divorce against her husband, if she is not willing to live with her husband. So, you see considering the plight of Indian Muslim female, the act was enacted in 1939 and Muslim female has been given more liberty to break their matrimonial tie, if she is not satisfied with her husband. And it would be always better for Muslim female to get rid of from the matrimonial tie, if they are not satisfied with their husband. So, I this is all about your option of puberty, Kharul Bulu concept and who can exercise option of puberty, Muslim husband, Muslim wife, who is at advantageous position, what is the minimum age. I have highlighted, I have covered each and every aspect of option of puberty. Now, come to this impact of option of puberty and marriage. What would be the consequences of option of puberty on marriage? With the help of this slide, I would like to explain the impact of option of puberty. So, let us understand this concept impact of option of puberty on marriage, you just look at this. First is children are legitimate, if option right to maintenance, right to inheritance, dower, section 125 CRPC, maintenance is entitled to get maintenance and she is also get entitled to get maintenance from her relatives. So, I have highlighted all these things uh, in this slide, so that you can get all these. What would be the impact of option of puberty? Let us discuss one by one. 
as I said, option of puberty is approval or disapproval of marriage, which was after becoming adult, after becoming age, after attaining the age of puberty. So, here Muslim husband has approved his marriage, has exercised option of puberty, Kharul Bulab. It is presumed that children born out of that wedlock would be legitimate. So, child or children would be legitimate after the approval of marriage, after exercising option of puberty. Second import important right which can be claimed by Muslim female against her husband that is maintenance. Here you need to understand that once marriage is approved by Muslim husband, Muslim female is entitled to get maintenance from her husband. What amount she would get as a maintenance from her husband would be determined by the court on the basis of status of the parties on the basis of status of Muslim female. So, that is different. So, there is different criteria for determining amount of maintenance and court will take all the relevant court will consider all the relevant factors while ascertaining the amount of maintenance to that Muslim female. Right of inheritance after the approval of marriage Muslim female is entitled to inherit the property of her husband once marriage is approved duly approved by the parties husband and wife Muslim wife is entitled to inherit the property of her husband and vice versa is also true Muslim husband is also entitled to inherit the property of his wife as I said <coughs> right right of maintenance that is being regulated by three different laws the three different laws are Muslim personal laws section 125 CRPC and Muslim women act 1986. Under these three different laws Muslim wife is entitled to get maintenance from her husband in three different ways I would, I would like to discuss one by one. So, once marriage is approved option of puberty is exercised. Muslim female is entitled to be maintained by his husband by his by her husband and here liability to maintain to his wife that is imposed by the law not by the ethics. So, Muslim husband is under obligation to provide financial assistance to his wife whenever financial demand whenever demand is made by Muslim female. So, Muslim female, Muslim male cannot refuse to provide financial assistance to his wife, but irony of the law is that Muslim personal law will not help an agreed Muslim female after the expiry of Iddat period. Well, so I was, I was talking about uh, option of poverty, impact of option of poverty on marriage. So, in that context I try to highlight some important provision. Now, I would like to discuss one important significant impact of option of puberty on marriage that is right of maintenance. Right to maintenance which is very precious right in the hands of Muslim female and which arises due to matrimonial relationship. So, once option of puberty is exercised by Muslim female, she is entitled to get maintenance from her husband. Now, this right of maintenance is subject to fulfillment of certain conditions. What are those conditions? Muslim female is entitled to get maintenance from her husband only up to the period of Iddat. 
after the expiry of hiddat period she will have to knock the door of her relatives and there are certain things which are also important for getting maintenance those important things are if muslim female is if muslim wife is living separately without reasonable cause or she is not giving company to her husband she is refusing to establish sexual relationship with her husband or she is living she is committing cruelty she herself is involved in com in committing cruelty against her husband if husband has succeeded in establishing the fact before the court that that his wife is living separately without sufficient cause she would lose her right if she is not giving company to her husband she might lose her right of maintenance under personal law or under any other laws if she has committed bigamy in case of bigamy she would be deprived from the benefit of maintenance if she has committed adultery in commission of that in in case of adultery she might be deprived from the benefit of that so you see this right to maintenance is subject to fulfillment of certain conditions bigamy adultery living separately without reasonable cause so this right to maintenance is subject to these three important conditions bigamy adultery and cruelty and fourth element is living separately without sufficient cause if any one of these four element exist c would be deprived from the benefit of financial assistance and her husband would not be compelled by the court to provide financial assistance if any one of these four which i have just referred is present before the court or is proved before the court c would be deprived from the benefit of financial assistance another important thing is that this right of maintenance this irony of law is that which has always been in debate that she has three important rights which she can claim against her husband that is she is also entitled to get maintenance under section 125 crpc so as i said even section 125 crpc has certain limitations so far as maintenance is concerned though section 125 crpc has secular character it is equally applicable to all the religion irrespective of caste creed and religion section 125 crpc is applicable but there are two important limitations provided in section 125 crpc that is a person having sufficient means neglects his wife children or parents who are unable to maintain themselves shall be directed by the court to provide maintenance to wife children or parents so the words used in section 125 crpc makes it clear that muslim husband cannot be compelled to provide financial assistance if he has no sufficient means 
to provide maintenance. Sufficient means here means that is the primary condition to get benefit of section 125 CRPC. To invoke section 125 CRPC, the aggrieved person will have to establish before the court, Muslim female will have to establish before the court that her husband has sufficient means, adequate means in spite of that he is not providing maintenance to that Muslim female. This is the first condition which must be proved before the court in order to get benefit of 125 CRPC. Second important thing is that through affidavit she will have to prove before the court that she is unable to maintain herself. If Muslim female is able, if she is in position to maintain herself, she is employed or she is earning something from any source, she can maintain herself, she cannot take benefit of section 125 CRPC. So, you need to understand these two. Application of 125 CRPC is subject to fulfillment of these two conditions having sufficient means and inability to maintain means agreed must be aggrieved must be in position to not to maintain herself. And first is a Muslim husband who has adequate means he is rich in resources and in spite of that he is neglecting or refusing to maintain his children or wife who are unable to maintain. So, these two things which you need to remember that application of section 125 is subject to fulfillment of these two limitations. In spite of these two, there are four additional limitations which also deprive a Muslim female from getting financial assistance from her husband that is that I have already highlighted in my previous uh, lecture that, that is bigamy, adultery, cruelty and non-performance of sexual relationship living separately without reason. So, that these four things are very much important for getting financial assistance from husband. Now, come to the third law third important statute which provides financial assistance to Muslim female that is the Muslim Women Act 1986. What is the beauty of this act? In what way this statute is helpful is helping Indian Muslim, Indian Muslim female? I would like to throw some light on, on the salient features of this special legislation. You see section 3 of this act, section 3 and 4 of this act is these two provisions are very important. Section 3 says that Muslim husband is under obligation to provide maintenance to his wife up to the period of Hiddat. After the expiry of Hiddat period section 4 will come into picture and section 4 of this act says that where Muslim female who has sought maintenance from her husband and after the expiry of Hiddat period that Muslim women can only get maintenance either from her relatives or from state work board. Here you just concentrate on this point what I am highlighting. Muslim Women Act 1986, the Muslim Women Protection of Right After Divorce Act 1986 which talks about maintenance of Muslim women. 
so that Muslim female will have to get maintenance from state work board. This is the law regarding maintenance of Muslim female. Now, the another important right which Muslim female can claim against her husband that is claim of unpaid dower, right to dower, right to mehar. She is entitled to get unpaid dower against her husband just by filing suit for recovery of unpaid dower. So, right to dower is also a very precious right in the hands of Muslim female. If option of poverty is exercised by Muslim female and she is willing to live with her husband, then she is entitled to get full dower if marriage is consummated and there are different provisions or where dower is not paid by Muslim husband, it would entitle, it would empower Muslim female to get relief against her husband. Well, students, so now I would like to highlight right to dower. How unpaid dower would empower Muslim female to not only to get her unpaid dower against her husband, but also she can retain the property of her husband till the realization or until the unpaid dower is realized by her. So, this is very important thing which uh, would affect her right of dower, where option of puberty is exercised by Muslim female, the amount which was fixed by the father or grandfather of that Muslim male at the time of marriage. After exercising option of puberty, Muslim husband is not providing that amount of dower, then see what she will do. She will have to file a suit for recovery of unpaid dower in a civil court. Suit for recovery of unpaid dower, in that, in that suit she can claim her unpaid dower after establishing the fact before the court that since she has exercised option of puberty. She is living with her husband along with her husband in the same house. In spite of that, husband has refused to provide dower mehar to his wife. And now he is asking, he husband is pleading for the court that he was not party to the contract, he was not informed an amount, or he may say that the amount fixed by his father grandfather at the time of marriage was so high. So, that amount should be reduced. So, in this case you see if dower is not paid by Muslim husband to his wife, she can refuse from cohabitation. How many rights which she can exercise against her husband? She can refuse from her from giving company to her husband. She can also retain the property of her husband until the amount of dower is realized by her against from her husband. So, till the realization of unpaid dower, she can retain the property. She can take possession over the property of her husband till the realization of that unpaid dower. You see, but important thing is that she has only possessory right over the property, she cannot transfer that property to anybody else either by way of sale or by way of mortgage. So, the important thing is that in case of unpaid dower, where option of puberty is exercised, she has approved that marriage and dower is not paid by her husband to that female, she cannot 
become the owner of that property over which she has taken position she is only the she has only the possessory right she can possess the property till the until the amount of dowry is realized but she cannot transfer that property by way of sale or gift otherwise that transaction will be void this is another aspect of unpaid dower another important thing is that which she can uh, use against her husband in case of unpaid dower if dower is not paid you as you all might be knowing that unpaid dower is like a debt and female is treated as muslim wife is treated as creditor and her husband is treated as debtor and though unpaid dower is like unsecured debt no security is given by the party against that un unpaid dower even though muslim wife is entitled to get that unsecured debt from her husband as you all might be knowing that debt are two types debt that is secure debt unsecured debt pledge that is secure debt something has to be delivered by the pledger if i want to take money uh, then i will have to put my watch as a pledge after putting that watch i can take money from the money lender but this unpaid dower is unsecured debt no security is given so law has created that obligation law has imposed that obligation on muslim husband that we, you will have to pay that unpaid dower that amount which was fixed by your father or grandfather at the time of marriage you cannot take any kind of plea you will have to pay that amount but what i said this unpaid dowry is unsecured debt muslim wife is creditor her husband is debtor and she will get being a creditor she can exercise all the rights which which a creditor can exercise in case of money lending so you all need to understand about right to dower how right to dower plays important role in this option of property then you come to see can you see how option of property gives liberty to the muslim female to avail all the benefit to get all the benefit which she can get not in case of that marriage which was which was performed by her own wishes so she would be entitled to get all kinds of benefit just after exercising option of puberty right this right of dower gives liberty to that muslim female to remit her claim in favor of her husband for example once option of puberty is exercised by muslim female and she has decided not to claim that dower from her husband she is free to i am you see, now you see i am i am talking about different aspect of this dower earlier i said that unpaid dower would be treated as debt and muslim female being a creditor will have all the rights which a creditor can have as a money lender so now i am going to discuss another aspect of this dower that is known as right of remission in muslim law where muslim wife can remit 
her claim in favor of her husband she can relinquish her claim in favor of her husband she can exempt her husband from the liability of dower mayor how in what way she can remit there is you see there there are certain requirements for a valid remission in technical word that is referred as hiba e mehar gift of mehar so you see how option of puberty gives liberty to that female to relinquish her claim in favor of her husband to remit her claim in favor of husband that is also very important aspect of impact of option of puberty on marriage so she can relinquish her claim in favor of husband and that transaction is referred as hiba e mehar meaning thereby where muslim has muslim wife had decided to exempt her husband from the liability of mehar either she can relinquish whole amount of dower which was fixed by the father or grandfather of that muslim muslim male husband or any part thereof either whole amount can be relaxed can be exempted or she can partly or any part of that amount uh, dower can be exempted can be remitted by muslim female in favor of her husband so muslim female in order to remit that dower would be sane would be of sound mind she must be in position to understand the nature and consequences of her act what she is going to do whether she is making she is remitting that amount in favor of husband voluntarily or she is making that amount under compulsion under influence under compulsion threat these are the areas where law will intervene if any one of these component is established for the court by muslim wife that due to this due to compulsion due to threat due to under influence due to inducement she was compelled to remit she was compelled to relinquish her claim her dower in favor of husband then law will take its own course and in that situation muslim husband will lose his right and she will get her whole amount the this process this transaction is known as uh, right of remittance so right to remit remit here means relinquish transfer surrender so she can surrender her claim in favor of husband due to natural love and affection there might be several reason for that and the reason is natural love and affection or she is willing to not give more burden to her husband so she can relieve him from the burden of dower from the burden of mayor so this right of dower that is subject to that is connected with right of remittance right of right of retention right to hold the property till the realization of dower refusal from cohabitation she can also refuse from giving company to to her husband and you see this is all about your impact of option of poverty on marriage as i said right to maintenance right to dower right to inheritance all these consequences would happen 
in case of option of puberty if marriage is approved by Muslim male or female. Other important things which will affect which uh, a Muslim wife or husband can get benefit after exercising this option of puberty is once option of puberty is once marriage is approved either by husband or by wife the children born due to that wedlock they are treated as legitimate child cohabitation would be lawful children are legitimate rule of inheritance would be applicable option of puberty is approved Muslim wife or husband has both have duly approved that marriage consummation takes place rule of inheritance should be applicable meaning thereby in case of death of husband Muslim wife is entitled to get property of her husband she is entitled to inherit the property of her husband after death of that husband and vice versa is also true Muslim husband is also entitled to get property of his wife Muslim husband is also entitled to inherit the property of his wife so rule of inheritance is also applicable children are legitimate and another important thing which parties can claim against each other wife as well as husband both they are entitled to get a benefit under this Muslim law that is succession property would be inherited by mutually by, by wife or husband in case of uh, death of the parties. So, these, these are the consequences or impact of option of puberty in Muslim law. Once marriage is approved, duly approved by the parties, there, there would be certain consequences for that. So, I think this is all about your option of puberty and impact of option of puberty under Muslim law. With this I think you all have understood the things which I have discussed in this uh, slide and more important thing is that in case of dissolution of marriage if option of puberty is exercised after exercising that option of puberty if uh, marriage is dissolved then that Muslim female who has approved her marriage she will have to observe Iddat and she will have to live simple and pure life in case of option of puberty. Option of puberty is exercised, marriage is dissolved due to certain due to uh, bitter relationship between, between husband and wife, then she will have to live simple and pure life. And then after, after the expiry of that period, both parties are free to live separately and Muslim female is entitled to get maintenance. Here again this you see that, that maintenance right to maintenance is subject to fulfillment of certain conditions and even, even Iddat is one important condition which parties are uh, supposed to do meaning thereby. Uh, after the expi after the expiry of Iddat period and our this this Iddat period would be counted in different ways as I said, where marriage is dissolved due to due to divorce due to talaq that period is three months. In case of pregnancy, that period is counted till the delivery of child. If uh, in case of death of husband, that is four month ten days. So, these are different periods of Iddat which, which are counted by counted for the purpose of ascertaining Iddat periods 
so that any kind of doubt or ambiguity can be avoided. So, after the expiry of Hiddat period, Muslim female, if she wants to remarriage, the procedure between the procedure uh, to get back her previous husband that is very toughest procedure that is very tough procedure adopted by the Muslims. So, <clears throat> if both is a divorce couple, husband has given divorce to his wife and both parties have decided to contract marriage again, they cannot contract marriage again without performing tough procedure prescribed by Islam. So, if Muslim female who has exercised option of poverty and after the approval of marriage, they have decided not to live together. So, Iddat period will be observed, she will have to observe Iddat period. After the expiry of Iddat period, if uh, they want to repent themselves, if they have decided to live, again they have decided to live as a wife and husband. So, they cannot live as a wife and husband unless they perform certain procedure prescribed by the law and that procedure is known as halala practice in Islam and Muslim female will have to perform, will have to follow that practice only then she can take back her previous husband. So, okay, I was talking about impact of option of poverty, option of poverty on marriage. So, what I said? If uh, after the expiry of the period, if Muslim wife again wants to take back her previous husband, she cannot take back her previous husband without observance of tough procedure. That tough procedure is known as halala practice in Islam that is also pending before the Supreme Court and many petitions are pending before the Supreme Court, PIL has been filed before the Supreme Court in order to avoid that tough practice and that is also very. So, Muslim female if she wants to get back her previous husband to whom she has given divorce or either period has expired, she can take back her previous husband only after observance of that tough procedure that is known as halala practice. So, this this is all about your impact of option of poverty and I have covered each and every aspect of uh, this option of poverty kharul bulug and I do believe that you all have understood the things which I have presented before you. So, with this I would like to conclude this lecture. Thank you. Thank you.